Hello, everybody. This is um, the second part of my message talking about righteousness, justice, and the issues of caring for the poor, the needy, the downtrodden in our midst. Um, my base scripture is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 34, which basically says, Righteousness exalts a nation, and sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts. It's very important to recognize that God is looking to elevate nations at this time, but also some nations are going to be brought down. And I believe that one of the conditionalities for a nation to be lifted is how they care for the poor, for the needy, for the infirmed, for the downtrodden, for the um, marginalized in the societies. I really believe that God's cry, there is a heart cry of God today for leaders to take responsibility for the alleviation of suffering among the people of, among the people of their nations. Every leader must recognize that God is looking at us and the way we handle the needy around us. So today I'm going to start uh, if you want to hear the first part, you know, I will put a link there for you. But today I'm, I'm, I'm moving on with this message. And I want to start today with, with the scripture taken from the book of Micah chapter 6 verse 8. And I call this the justice mandate of God. And, 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 and it says, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly. To do justly or to do justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I believe that everybody regardless of your station in life, we have a duty to care for our neighbors. We have a duty to care for those who need help. We must, in this season, reach out to help another person. Do not take this lightly. God is watching us. He's watching how we respond. He's watching how governments handle the issue of, of hunger, the issue of of displacement, the issue of healthcare, the issue of, 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 of people being cared for, security, all these things, God is looking at them because he's, he's, he's going to weigh um, leadership on the basis of how we treat the, the weakest member of our society and our communities. And all leaders who think that the position they occupy is for them, to, be, to self-aggrandize, to make money for themselves, and to further their own nest. I am telling you, hear me, you are under the judgment of God. The sword of the Lord is hanging or dangling over your head. Because I am telling you, God is, is not happy with the way that we have been treating the poor. He is not happy. And God is coming for you. So I'm sending a word to you to be very careful to amend your ways right now and, 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 and repent and begin to look after the poor. Make a decisive decision. Make a decisive commitment that you will not be found on the other side of God's judgment. That, that you will be found on the right side. So let me just continue very quickly. In Matthew 25, from verses 31 to 40, there is, a, uh, there is a piece of scripture that, you know, I, I, I want to read to you. I think I should read it. The Bible says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, all the, and the, and, sorry, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd divides, divides his sheep from the goats, and he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those who are on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. 
I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous, listen to this. He said, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you have, you did this to one, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Hmm. It is important for us to know that God sees how we handle the poor, the weakest in our society, as how we relate to him. Looking after the poor is like Serving God. It is doing God's bidding. And every minister, every ruler, every king, every powerful person, corporate people, social people, political people, whatever your station is, whatever your leadership is, you are not there for yourself. You are there to care for the people. And God is going to judge you on the basis of how you handle the weakest member of the community that you serve. So be careful how you act in these days. Be careful. And make sure that you walk in justice. You walk in righteousness. This word in Hebrew is the word sadak. And the Muslims call it sadaka. It's not just about giving arms. It is about lifting people. It's about defending people. It's about caring for people. In the book of, of Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, I want you to understand that in this uh, um, scripture I read earlier on in Matthew 25, the Lord divided nations into two, God nations and sheep nations. Are we going to be a sheep nation? Is your nation going to be a sheep nation? Because it is based on how we care for the weak. How we care for the weak. I am hearing the undercurrent and the tone sometimes in the voice of leadership. And I'm, I'm almost hearing that some people are not that important. Hmm. Be careful. Because God created those people in his own image, according to his own likeness. And God's spirit dwells in them. And God is the one who gave them life. So for you to mash up a person or treat a person or trade a person down, you are offending God. You are offending God. So I want you to understand. I am sending this message to you because it is what God laid on my heart. That nations are going to be weighed on their response to the justice mandate. So whatever you're, you are doing, you're a government leader, a politician, you're a corporate leader, you're a rich man, you're a rich woman, you are wealthy, you run churches, you are you know, a pastor with a lot of wealth, what are you doing with the wealth? Who are you saving it up for? Whatever your station is, just hear the word of the Lord. I, 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 you know, I, I believe that God is looking at you. He's looking at you and he's, he's weighing you based on your response to the poor. Based on your response to the needy. Today I'm going to close uh, this session by um, just, just sharing something with you. The Bible says that blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. I'm going to, I'm going to end with a little story. Some years ago, I, we came back to Nigeria and we built a house somewhere in Lekki. It was an isolated place. And a lot of the residents in the area were, were very affluent, in, in quote and unquote. And um, I began to talk to the, what they call the area boys and the people who live in the bachelors and the, you know, uh, Poor people around the area. I began to talk to them on an evening basis. I began to have fellowship with them. And eventually, I became very friendly with quite a lot of them. And I used to bring them to the house. 
and we used to share fellowship with them and all that. And I got, you know, um, called into our association meeting, our landlord's association meeting, to warn me of my association with these guys that, you know, it was not nice for the area and it was bad and all that. And to be honest with you, I did understand what they were saying, but I did also know that God told me to reach out to those people. So I was reaching out to them and I continued doing what I was doing. And, you know, I kept on, you know, defending, you know, some, sometimes they would tell me they're going to go and break down where they live and all that. I said, look, let's be careful with this stuff. But anyway, to cut a long story short, there was a day uh, my daughter forgot to put out a candle in her room and the, the, the candle caught fire or the curtain caught fire. And my, her, my, my, her room was engulfed in fire. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what to do. No, there was no fire service. So I just ran out of the house and sat down. And I was looking. And this area boy saw what was going on and they, they ran to my house. They picked up buckets uh, of water and there were over a hundred of them. And they entered the fire and put the fire out with, with buckets of water and some detergent. I don't know how they knew that that would work. But they entered the place and just put the fire out. And they, they saved my house, saved my property. And so everybody in the area, they were now looking at me and saying, these area boys have come true for you. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that I did it because I wanted them to do anything for me, but the Bible says, blessed are those who are merciful because they themselves will obtain mercy. So let me leave you with this thought. If you cry, who's going to answer you? If you're in trouble, will you find help? Because what you sow is what you reap. To look after the poor, to care for the needy is a mandate that God has given to all of us. God bless you.